So, um, I was fortunate to be a delegate at the um, European Green Party Council meeting in Riga. EGP is, the, is what everyone calls it because it's a lot quicker than saying European Green Party. This is the, um, as you can see, the 35th one. Um, and we had six delegates from the Green Party of England and Wales, and that includes the elected international coordinator. Um, so my previous experience with European Greens, I was a delegate at the first ever Congress in Vienna in 96. I've attended several Congresses, although this was the first one in a few years. Um, I have networked with Greens from other countries quite a lot. Um, and obviously, having worked for two MEPs, I have some experience through that of, again, networking with MEPs and other European Greens. Um, so these are the delegates. Um, except for Andrew Cooper, who we didn't know was on the panel because no one had spotted it, but he's a councillor in Huddersfield and he was um, there as well. Uh, we were actually, um, due to an admin error, we were one delegate down. Um, not, nothing to do with the European Green Party. It, it was an error that happened here and it was just one of those things, um, which was a shame. Um, and, oh, and the lanyard was really useful because it had a floor plan and a QR code so you could quickly get the programme if you didn't have the app. And this was amazing. Um, I've been to have a, an, a Congress app on my phones or a meeting apps that I could get notifications about meetings, see the, the timetable. These were all the different things I could link onto. It was phenomenal. Um, full agenda every agenda item i could click on and find out who was speaking or information about that particular item on the agenda or if it was a voting session about what we were voting on um comprehensive list of all participants so you can search back and and, and contact people um biogs for all the speakers which was fantastic um and it also listed all the stalls and although there weren't a lot of stalls there were a, a good number um, and a good mix of people, uh, including um, young greens and green seniors, which was nice. Um, a few stalls weren't actually Green Party, but they're sort of regular stalls that come to these sorts of events. Um, there were also links to all the social media, as well as a hashtag, which seems to have a W in front of it. Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. So that was good. So I, from my smartphone, I could link to Twitter and then tweet about the Congress. So the sessions were a combination of things. It was primarily the council meeting um, where we voted on the new members of the council, but there were lots of other sessions. Um, and of course the resolutions that were tabled by different parties and, and all the amendments that were discussed. Um, but there were things like walking tours, panel discussions, information sessions. Um, and we ended up with a big party on the last night with food. And yes, I did dance till 3 a.m. Mm. and managed to get to the, the session at 10 o'clock the next morning. Um, the most exciting for me keynote speakers were the, the first ever Green Prime Minister, Montenegro, who's only 36, and the leader of the Latvian Greens, uh, Latvian, sorry, Ukraine, Ukrainian Greens. That's my typo. I'm sorry about that. Um, my grandfather was Ukrainian, so it was quite emotional for me to, to under the current climate, to see a, a Ukrainian party leader speak. Um, I attended workshops. Um, the one that I, I attended and contributed to the most was the workshop where the Russia-Ukraine resolution was discussed. Um, the woman who's actually speaking here is Tetiana Bodin, who is another Ukrainian Green, and she was in floods of tears reading out examples of the horrific war crimes that are happening in Ukraine at the moment to illustrate what, what Russia is doing. Um, there were quite a lot, large number of amendments. Some had been composited together. Others, there were, it was sort of discussions around details of, of language really, because the common language throughout the weekend was English. And obviously for some, the English isn't, as sophisticated as mine was so yeah. those of us who were fluent in English were were able to help guide other delegates um, so that we could come up with resolutions um, with a final compromise resolution that everyone would be happy with um, so the, the resolutions that we adopted were stop Russia's war on aggression against Ukraine um, we voted on the the conference on the future of Europe 
which I, I wasn't actually involved in, but that was quite comprehensive. The cyber warfare one was um, potentially controversial, but, but some of the issues were ironed out and it became a really good resolution as did the care of older persons one. And the nuclear power plant was one that was tabled by the Turkish Greens with support from the Cypriot Greens um, and was a, a big success. We also accepted two more member parties, the, the Finland um, and Latvia. The Finland one, you can see one of the Finland um, representatives was quite happy jumping up and down and someone managed to catch him in the air. Um, and the social media was really lovely, loads of people retweeting, welcome to our family. Um, and very exciting for the Latvian Greens because of course we were in Latvia. Uh, one of the evenings we had a, a film screening. So the green screen is something that's worth looking at. It was set up during the pandemic to help support debates, to support culture. Um, and they have regular film screenings online that you can um, join in with. Um, so we had one that was very relevant to Latvia um, uh, about growing up under the USSR control during the Cold War. Really, really interesting. And there was a reception afterwards where I had the, the privilege of speaking to the director. Um, so I, I can definitely recommend joining Green Screen, although unlike at the Congress, you won't get popcorn. <laughs> unless you provide it yourself. Um, so the voting was done in two different ways. For the resolutions, we used the sunflower petals. And yes, there were people holding them up with having photos taken to look like rabbit ears. Um, that was quite a common occurrence. But we also had a voting machine. The voting machine was specifically for all the council elections, um, and we had comprehensive instructions and a test. So the test was whether or not we'd, you'd watch the Eurovision Song Contest. And I have to admit that the number who said they had was higher than I'd expected. Um, and the voting machine, one of the instructions was do not remove the card, which is this plastic card to one side. Um, but some people couldn't resist fiddling and had to run off and get it fixed several times. Um, the advantage of the voting machine is that they know they know to call for the any votes that haven't happened yet um and it also meant that some delegates if they had to leave the room suddenly could give the voting machine to another delegate so the the two main elections were for one of the the co-chairs so menly vogel is a new co-chair of the european green party she's actually french but she's based in brussels um and is very very good i had actually come across her before the congress um and then Benedetta de Marta, who is another person who's actually based in Brussels and is a councillor, elected councillor in Brussels. Um, she had come, spoken to England and Wales delegates before the Congress and we were very, very impressed with her. Um, and um, I now have her phone number and fully intend to keep in touch with her. Um, we also had elections for the council committee. So this is a new committee um, from a range of countries. Uh, the interesting one for me is Malgorzata from Poland, because she's actually from the Oxford twin town of Roxworth. So we've decided that we will form a political green, Greens twinning link, um, which is something that I think would be nice for us to pursue across OGP, looking at where we're twinned with and whether there are active Greens. Um, so this was the, the new committee. Um, Jean Lambert has been on the committee for the last two and a half years, mostly um, meeting on Zoom, uh, and, but had decided, has decided to stand down because she's concentrating on Europe-wide trade union work now. Um, she got a standing ovation and lots of love and will be clearly be missed by other council members. Oh, to Michael was also re-elected as treasurer. She is brilliant. Um, and for those that don't know what her, she's a German Green, I believe she's a councillor in Germany, but she was a, a councillor in London some years ago. And you can see that she got 100% vote, so very popular. We had a strong presence from the Federation of Young European Greens. Quite a lot of them actually work for the European Green Party in Brussels. Um, lots of energy um, and passion and really inspiring and, and for those of us who are older it's nice to know that we've got a strong group to, to pass on to. 
Um, we had a protest about housing problems. So the housing problems that we know of in the UK are common across Europe. Um, so we, we did a big march with police escort through the streets of Riga, which was quite exciting. We also launched a new European Gravity Gender and Queer Network. Um, and actually I was asked to speak on behalf of the uh, England and Wales delegation. Um, and I met with the newly formed Progressive Interfaith Coalition um, and have stayed in touch with them. And this information is actually for Dick Wolf when I get to, when he gets back from his holiday. But this is quite an exciting, I think, um, initiative we, on the understanding that some people identify with the faith but, uh, but might not be very religious. So any members of um, OGP who are interested, please contact me and I can put you in touch with Peter Denneman, who's the organiser. Lots of lovely greens. Um, I appeared in a video with the Balkan greens. They asked me to. I was kind of adopted by them, which was very nice. This is some of the Balkan greens. These are even more Balkan greens. As you can see here, so many different countries. Um, it was really lovely. Um, I'm really nice to bu bump into Kaizu Tai, who used to be an Oxford green, but now lives in Finland. And um, thanks to Kaizu, I was able to enter the raffle. The European Green Party is now funded by the EU, it has other funding, but it gets funding from the EU, uh, which means that member parties that aren't part of the EU can't actually donate to the European Green Party and therefore couldn't enter the raffle. So Keizu entered on my behalf, which was very nice of him. Um, it flagged up a big issue that was being discussed during the weekend of, of what to do with the, with the countries that aren't in the EU now that they have EU funding and there are moves to, for us to unite with other European countries that aren't in the EU um, so that we can make sure our voices are still represented because um, even though Green Party of England and Wales is a founder member of the European Green Party we don't have the same opportunities that Euro European Green Parties have now which is very sad. So lots of freebies. Um, I really like the, the Ukraine ones. Um, and I got a few extras, which I will take quite a few of these. Oops, quite a few of these I will actually take to Green Party Conference to because there are various groups who will put them on their stalls. Um, and the back of the badges was interesting because it's a magnet, which I think is something that we should do if we ever make our own badges. And this was the popcorn that I referenced earlier for the green screen, which uh, I brought home with me and we'll have at some point. Um, so any member can attend any any European Green Party meeting or any global greens meeting for that matter. Um, and if you do, if you aren't a delegate and you're able to, you can self fund. That's certainly how I most of the European Green Party meetings I've been to. I've self funded. So applications for delegates for the Congress in Copenhagen in December should be in an email sometime in late October, early November. Um, and that's your chance to apply if you want to be a delegate. And if you were a delegate, all your expenses are funded. Um, and the same applies for Global Greens. I don't know when the call out is for the Global Greens Congress, so keep an eye on, on national emails. 